Hello and welcome to my craft room. I've just got home from a day out. I've been visiting my son and um, guess what was waiting for me when I got back? <laughs> it's the January 2022 school box. Shall we see what's inside? Oh, and just first of all, I've just got to show you this. My son made this for me on his 3D printer. <laughs> is to hang up on my craft room door to let my husband know when I'm filming. <laughs> That's just a joke. I never do that. Never. Never. So, shall we have a look at the scroller box now? I'm going to try really hard to make sure that we just get something like this for the thumbnail. I've got some uh, feedback that it's a bit unfortunate for people who haven't had their box yet if they see a bit of a spoiler in, in the thumbnail. So, um, I'm going to try and I'm hoping that um, YouTube will pick this up as one of the uh, thumbnail options otherwise I'll have to take a little picture of it and upload it instead. Okay, let's go shall we? Okay. <laughs> I wasn't expecting it yet. Normally you get a couple of emails to say it's on the way and I don't remember seeing that email this time. I probably missed it. Oh lovely colours. Oh lovely lovely colours. I wonder what it's going to be this time. A few people were a bit disappointed to have markers again last time. Although I, I quite enjoy markers, so I'm peeking. <laughs> okay, so there's the school of zine. I'm not going to peek inside yet because that will give us too much of a clue. That probably, yes, I think we can see the kind of colours we're going to be getting, which I really like. We've got, we've had this uh, paint on paper a few times before different colors and things so this is a smooth white very smooth white quite heavy 250 gsm multi techniques so not really much of a clue there let's get a box out of it Ooh, and get to the really exciting part which is what's inside this package <laughs> it's funny isn't it because like you could go out and buy yourself you could spend this money on getting art, art supplies yourself each month but it wouldn't be a surprise. It wouldn't make you try things that perhaps you wouldn't even have thought of. And and also, I do think you know you usually get a bit more than the the retail value. Oh, it's a pencil. It's a, an H pencil, harder pencil. That's unusual. That's quite good for making a really faint line. Sticker. I need to find a new home. I'm getting. I've covered a couple of different art journals with stickers and I've got a bit of a collection going on that I haven't found a home for yet. The challenge phrase this month is creature comforts. Keeping it cosy with a comfortingly warm palette. Oh, I love a Micron pen. Micron 12. Ooh. I've not had one that fat before. I love Micron pens. I've got a whole bunch of them but um i think the fattest one i've had before um apart from the brush pens i've got a micron brush pen so there's a there's a brush pen um other than that what's the fattest one i've had we're like an eight maybe yeah 12 mm. oh look <laughs> south is too bar so they always match the colors to the the sweeties to the to the general colours. So this is the bit, this is the main meat of it, the exciting part. Pigment Deco brush. I think it probably is markers again. You see, so I feel like, yes, okay, even if it is markers again, the markers vary such a lot in their qualities. Oh, these are, these are brush markers, aren't they? Acrylic permanent ink with a flexible brush tip. Oh wow, no I've never had that. I've got lots of brush pens but not a paint. Basically this is a paint pen isn't it? But with a flexible brush tip. And not a selection of colours I would have picked out in a million years I don't think. But actually when you look at how they've been used there. So this is the Roots is a, free, is a freelance illustrator from Birmingham in the UK. Much of her work is heavily character based with a love for the weird and wonderful. Inspired by 90s pop culture and getting lost down nature's rabbit hole. <laughs> I'll better look at, um, at her later. So, I'm guessing these um, 
paint pens will work really well on this smooth paper. I'm tempted to try them on some dark paper as well. Um, so I might do that when I do it. I'll swatch in a minute and um, we'll, we'll see how they work on the dark as well. So this is the school of zine. So you always get the little menu card, which tells you a bit more about the supplies and how much they are as well, which is it's always nice to know. And you get your challenge. You get a card with some artwork from the featured artist using the supplies. And you always get some kind of a substrate. You always get a sweetie. <laughs> and then you get a mix. It can be anything. It can be markers, pastels, crayons, paints pens you know could, could be any any art supplies it's a complete mystery so here's a bit more you get the proper details on here but this just gives us a bit of an overview deco rate anything so paper metal glass plastic wood and textile um, 10 sheets of smooth white paper the um, micron will work perfectly with the paint markers and won't smudge or bleed and a yes less less graphite for lighter mark making so here's roots the featured artist I'll have a good read about her later. Look at these quirky characters. I love this fish. I've got a thing about fish. Then you always get some tips and things from um, from school and from the artist. Deco brush pens blend together absolutely beautifully with their felt brush tips. The colours are strong and saturated. I created a gradient fading the brown to yellow for the background using a dry brush in certain places. Ah, oh, I that's probably similar to what I've done with a, with a cotton swab. Ah, yeah, so she wanted the blends to be slightly more obvious to replicate the chunky thread of a cosy jumper. Yes, so here, that effect is what she's talking about. Oh, yes, I like that. Great addition to a calligrapher's toolkit. Yes, they definitely would be good for calligraphy, wouldn't they? Things to try. Before use, make sure you shake well with the cap still on, blah, blah, blah. Stall them horizontally if possible. Yep, mine are stalled horizontally in cases. You need to clean the tips. Briefly dip the tip into clean water, then paint with it on a sheet of clean paper until the float paint flows normally. That's handy to know. Uh, the brush tip can be prone to fraying if used on rough surfaces. So best use it on smooth. They blend together. To create a gradient or blend, apply your first colour and let it set briefly. Don't let it dry completely. Then paint your second colour next to it and bring the paint into the area where you want to create the transition. I need to play with these a little bit then to get the hang of them. Carefully mix these colour pigments using the first colour pen running the front two to three millimetres of the brush tip over the second colour. They're going to be fun to play with. Right so here is this is where they show just some of the many um, responses to the challenge from two months ago. So this one was creating calm. Oh there's some beautiful um, pieces here. All different takes on the on the challenge. I like twisted mandalas. They all answer the challenge, but all in very different ways. Yeah, love them. So, and then they give all the Instagram names there, so you can check them all out. Um, and then there's always a little article um, around the the theme of the month. So I'll have a good look at that later. So that's the school of zine. So all we've got to do now is the swatching. So this is the um, black square um, uh, card that we had in last month's box. So I'm going to try them on that as well because I, th I feel like they're probably going to show up nicely on black, but I might be wrong. So I'm not familiar with this name, Corinne, but that's probably just me. <laughs> okay. So the, uh, the hard pencil, yeah, as, as you would expect, makes a very light line, H. And then we've got the Micron 12, which is, is four points thicker than any other Micron I've had. Oh, it does feel lovely on that smooth paper. So that's a Micron 12. Be a really handy extra extra one to have actually. It's always nice to have one thicker one when you're doing when you're doodling and doing zentangling things which I do for a bit. So then we've got these pigment brushes. Shake before use. So they're not like the ones that you have to pump. Obviously the, the ink or the, the paint is already there. Acrylic permanent ink. Why did I read that as paint just now? Acrylic permanent 
ink. I think it's because I saw acrylic. <laughs> anyway, let's see. Oh, they are very pigmented. See how fine a line I can get. sun of it coming through at all it's very um, thick paper looks like card really so that's the brown is there a name henna that's called henna so it's a reddish brown they're all warm colors aren't they um, so this one's called it's just called red funny enough oh it's a beautiful red look at that <laughs> oh, what a vibrant yellow that is. Whoa. So now if I wanted to blend that in, so we want it to kind of set but not completely dry. Say I wanted to say I wanted to blend this yellow in with the red. Oh right, yes, look. soon comes clean again so with this piece what the featured artist roots was talking about was blending brown down into yellow I think that must have been on this one so you could go whoops the brown the red the orange and yellow and then sort of mix them in together got a cotton bud ready but I can see that if you've got a cotton bud you could that will help to blend them in or as um, Roots has done use a, a dry brush which I don't think I know you only for the challenge you're only supposed to use what's in the box but I think when you just use an extra brush or whatever it's no different from using an eraser or a sharpener you know it's just another tool that most of us got already so yeah those have blended really nicely in together now I'm gonna let them completely dry because you can see they're I don't know if you can see. Yeah, they're still there. That's just catching it a bit. They're still they're staying wet for quite a time. So I'm going to let them completely dry. And then I want to see what happens when you go over the top of each other when they're dry. And also how this works with them. And um, also want to see, make sure that this definitely doesn't move when you put um, the ink over the top. So while that's drying off, let's have a go and see if they will work in the dark because I'm intrigued. Surely the yellow will, if any of them are going to. Oh, look. Oh, look. How lovely is that? It's a bit like writing on a... Board. 
the chalk pens. And because this is a real nice flexible brush tip, oh I've got it all over my hand, um, you can get such a varying degree, a varying thickness of line. Oh, there's a lot of scope here isn't there? Now Oh, I'm thinking. Oh, I'm thinking dot mandalas with that shape instead of dots with this shape. Now that would be quite fun to try. Won't work for the challenge, but I can't use dark paper for the challenge either. So, yeah, I think that's that's really nice. It's making me think I, I might want some more of these because these are a bit different from anything else I've got. It's acrylic permanent ink, but to me, it feels like using a paint pen, which is acrylic paint, not ink. So, to be honest, I don't really understand the difference. All I know is how it feels to me. Okay, so um, that all feels dry now. Let's see what happens if we go over the top, say, over the top of that yellow with this brown. Yep. What about if I go over the top of the brown with the yellow? Yeah, that's good. Um, I guess you could go over again to an even more opaque finish, but I think that's pretty good. Um, I love just mark making with these brush pens. <laughs> so I want to see how this goes over the top as well. Yeah, absolutely fine. Doesn't seem to mind it at all, which is good. I think I would be very careful that the ink was perfectly dry before I put this Micron pen or any other pen like that over the top. So let's try Yep, no smudging going on. Is there a bit of smudge in there? Is there a bit of smudging? I think there's slight smudging there, but I wonder if this could be, it doesn't feel damp. I'm just going to have a go with the yellow because that will show any smudging a bit more. Yeah, it definitely does put it a little bit, I think. To be fair, I wouldn't normally kind of go over it like that with these kind of pens anyway. So that's my usual kind of um, very <laughs> higgledy piggledy swatching <laughs> process. Um, I uh, think I've done everything I need to do. Just one more thing I want to just go over here as well. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Very happy with that. So that's a good look at um, everything we've got in the box for January. It's nice to have all these warm colours. It's such a cold time of year. It's blooming freezing here at the moment. That's a bit misleading seeing that black there because I don't remember the black came in last month's um, box. So yeah, um, it is markers again. And I know some people are getting a bit Mm, about about keep getting markers but I just think they are very different again and, and I find markers quite a nice clean convenient portable medium um, I have literally hundreds and hundreds of different kinds of markers um, but I love them all and they all do really different things so I'm, I'm quite happy with that I can understand um, what people are saying but yeah but I, I'm happy with it personally yeah that's that I'm going to quickly cobble that together and um, so I'm going to hold this up here now and hopefully one of these will come up as a as a thumbnail and I'll leave that as a thumbnail at least until next month when I know everybody's had their had their boxes
okay so um thanks very much for joining me i hope you uh, if you if you're waiting for your school robots to come i hope you don't have to wait too long and i can't wait to see what everyone comes up with watch this space i, I shall cogitate for a couple of days as i usually do and then come back and do the challenge probably into next week now um thanks again for popping in today and i'll see you again really soon bye, -bye.